gentlemen, let me introduce to you the Cinema Snob. Rock, rock, Cinema Snob. Rock, rock, Cinema Snob. Rock, 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 Cinema Snob. Glad you're being together. Thank you very much. Rock, rock, Cinema Snob. As we continue on with Fultuary, you may have noticed that for City of the Living Dead, I have placed up a poster for, uh, what the fuck? That's not City of the Living Dead, that's Hell of the Living Dead. That's not even a Lucio Fulci movie, that's a Bruno Mattei movie. Although it does kind of look like the same zombie on both posters. Okay, fine, leave it. The one-eyed, drunk-looking zombie needs work too, I guess. Fulci's 1980 film, City of the Living Dead, is the first part of his unofficial Gates of Hell trilogy. The others, as we've said, are The Beyond and House by the Cemetery. So it makes sense it'd be the last of the three that I'd spotlight on the show. The film also involves the gates of hell being opened on Earth, this time in the town of Dunwich, a.k.a. Savannah, Georgia. The film got a 1983 U.S. release where it was known as The Gates of Hell, but when I first saw the movie, it was called City of the Living Dead, so it's called City of the Living Dead, not Gates of Hell, or Paranella City de Morti Viventi. Ooh, I don't know who she is, but she sounds hot. But first things first, we gotta find out what this copy of the movie is called. Okay, well, here it's called City of the Living Dead, but some girl seems really distressed about that. And Catriona McCall is known as Catriona here, and not Catherine, although someone chopped her last name in half. Are we gonna get some more Fabio Fritzi music this time around? Seems like Flipper the Dolphin is a big fan of Maurizio Guarini from Goblin, because that's what that is. Father Thomas here is either lost or he's really hungry for a Dunwich. God damn it, Grandpa, we put your final words on the tombstone, but there wasn't enough room for your name. Wait, why are we now in New York? I haven't even unpacked my things in Dunwich yet. Catriona McCall plays Mary Woodhouse, who gets a vision that she will suffer a sad fate in the beyond. Or maybe it's something else. <laughs> to be fair, they call him Father Chester the Molester for a reason. Uh, no one's gonna be upset about him hanging himself. But who cares about that when we have wonderful cinematography? Fulci doesn't usually film eyeballs. Psychic Mary is given a warning sign about the dead rising from the grave, or she's being possessed by Sam Weed again. Not really sure which. Best bring in the police. I'm afraid Mary's dead. No! 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 Yeah, nice fake tears. We all know you're secretly happy you get her apartment. Like every good detective in a Fulci world, he's got to read people's eyes to know if they're telling the truth. And pay attention to things like this. In the Book of Enoch, the killer Jeez. is... Sergeant, come here and look! Oh, right. It was free chili night at the seance. That also could have caused Mary's death. But uh, only if it was Joe Rogers' chili. Yuck. They're given a warning that something very similar may be happening in another town. And that puts Giovanni Lombardo Radice on high alert. He never survives these movies. 
You may know Giovanni Lombardo Radice as the best part of every movie he's in. Don't you remember this quotable line from Cannibal Ferox? Had you nailed down the minute I saw you. Oh, you did? What, that I'm a little whore? <laughs> All the way. <laughs> a hot pussy little whore. See? He gave us the term of endearment, hot pussy little whore. He's getting a free ticket into heaven for that one. I sure hope he does weird things in this movie, too. Well, now he could just be going to someone's bachelor party. Nah, he's gonna fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, never mind. He's gonna fuck that thing instead. A case this confusing needs journalist Peter, played by Christopher George. He's gone up against a grizzly, an exterminator, and a pieces. He can do this. Unfortunately, Officer Johnny McSeventy's porno won't let him inside. Uh, okay. Meanwhile, in a random bar. <laughs> Well, great, that's seven years of skunked beer. And there's a hole in your steam room. And worse yet, no one is sticking around to fix it. This movie needs to slow down and take a therapy session. When I was eight years old, I wanted to marry my father. I guess all girls that age want to marry their fathers. Not that kind of therapy. This movie is running through lead characters like John Wick runs through heads to shoot. Wait a minute, I could have sworn I saw Psychiatrist Jerry in last week's episode. Well, it's nice he made it back from Egypt safely. Anyway, Kitty has no time for you wanting to fuck your dad. I think you guys may be a little late in getting this body buried, not telling you how to do your job or anything. Too much of a good thing. Yeah, but what a way to go. What's the matter? Never see a body on Earth before? Strong words coming from a guy who got his dick cut off in Cannibal Holocaust. Poor Giovanni got his cut off in Cannibal Ferox, and now he's resorting to a blow-up doll for companionship. Mary got a speedier burial than Jill's parents in the beyond. At least people actually showed up for that funeral. Mary was buried within the afternoon, and she's still alive. This is why we need to use brainwave machines on people people and not skeletons. Thankfully, Christopher George saves her from her own remake of Buried. <laughs> that he had to open the casket in that extremely dangerous and inconvenient way. It's just that he wanted to. We now learn about the Book of Enoch. It's kind of like the Book of Ibon, only without the comic book section. Also, both of the books talk about the gates of hell being opened, which will most likely result in zombies. In this film, though, it's not a hotel in New Orleans. It's in Dunwich. And if the portals of hell don't get shut before... No dead body will ever be able to rest in peace again. And so the dead will rise up and take over the earth, and you must, you've got to get to Dunwich. You must reclose those gates. Eh, so long as it's not urgent. Jerry's assistant, Emily, searches around for, uh, who is she looking for? Bob? Bob, are you here? What? Bob? You mean Bob is in this? And they're on the starting grid set for the big race, Yogi. On your marks, go! Well, surely Bob can lighten any mood in this film. Bob? <laughs> oh, wait. Giovanni Lombardo Radice is playing Bob? That's right. I'm choosing to believe that he is playing the adult version of Bob from House by the Cemetery. Remember this? It did, Mommy. It fell down the stairs and was lying there. And I saw it. I did. Bob? Anyone who grows up with a misplaced voice like that is gonna grow up to fuck blow-up dolls. Unfortunately, it's Zombie Ash Wednesday. That's when zombie priests simply smear mud and worms on your face. Just like the Lord intended. Emily's father, Rodney Dangerfield, calls Jerry to figure out where she is, but we don't have time for that. We need a couple making out in a car. I'm sure they'll survive. This is actress Daniela Doria, and 
Now she's in the only place where Foolchi can't find her. He'll make the New York Ripper cut her up with a razor blade! <gasps> yeah, well, I think he found her. Not only that, but so is Father Zombie, who has scanner's powers now. <laughs> And these scanners' powers simply make you throw up your lunch. That is, if your lunch was sheep intestines. <laughs> I didn't have to show you more of that scene. I just decided to anyway. Good thing Detective Michele Soavi is hot on the case. Wait, that's not Italian horror director Michele Soavi. That is my mistake. They all decide to blame Bob for these killings, because who else would make this mess? Sheriff, what the dickens is this? That's something that requires much harsher words than what the dickens. <laughs> Now for some sweet eel juice to extend Emily's life. I don't think it's working. Meanwhile, the drunks at the bar are scheming together to hunt down Bob, only because it's eight years before they can band together to hunt down Michael Myers. The important thing is that Bob doesn't look guilty. He looks like he just came in second place at a hot dog eating contest. While Bob is checking out the local haunted house, and damn, they love their dead priests here, I want to see more scenes of Mary and Peter. I'm hungry. Good. There's a lollipop in the glove box. Mmm, sexual chemistry. And if ever there was a warning to not steal jewelry off dead bodies... <laughs> Don't hassle the dead, boy. They have eerie powers. And while little Damien, or uh, John John, listens to his Dawn of the Dead LP, who doesn't love putting on makeup to scare the neighborhood kids? Mommy! Mommy! What's the matter, honey? Hmm? I was bad. I saw her looking in the window. She wanted to... Oh, wait, I have questions. Were your parents 70 when they had you? I see this is where they find out Sandra, the therapy patient's father, was a rhino. I'm surprised she's not in therapy for the events that she witnessed and eaten alive. Uh-oh, I see that mentioning that movie gave her a breakdown. Only Dr. Jerry can help her. She's carrying a gun just in case he tries telling more of his stupid jokes for Manhattan Baby. Apparently the problem is in the kitchen. Oh, Christ. <laughs> That's not even why she called him over. There's a huge spider in the sink! Other than that dead body, I suppose everything else is normal here. Is still Getty, you come out from behind there. Unfortunately, God lets out a huge sneeze that destroys her window and her walls. <laughs> Good news is, you no longer have that rat problem in your walls. Peter and Mary are still a bit lost, so they seek the help from Father David Soul, and we're still 30 plus years into no one being as cool as Christopher George. Bob continues being the lovable child molester. Seriously, all the girls want to smoke a joint with him. Their fathers, however, want to beat the shit out of him. I can't imagine why. Here, this'll teach you a lesson. Best put a power drill right through your head. Damn, that smarts. Best send that corpse right off to the foolchuary. That's the wackiest thing I've ever heard. Jerry and Sandra are solving their own case to find out exactly why that Bob subplot was in the movie. Peter and Mary have finally made it to Dunwich. They left Paul behind. These folks have some catching up to do. And that's the whole story. 
my god in heaven. And he hasn't even gotten to the part with the maggot storm. <laughs> Well, I know of one movie that's getting a negative review on Yelp. But maggots are no excuse to not answer your phone. Yeah? Who's speaking? Hey, yeah, it's the Foley guy. Are you sure that a group of maggots sounds like masturbating with a handful of jello? Emily and John John's parents are dead, which could be the work of zombie Emily, or it could be natural causes, the parents were 105. The gates of hell must be closed before All Saints Day, so in order to do that, just follow the Fabio Fritzi music. <laughs> Always the last place you'd expect to see zombies. Well, who's gonna be the first to go? Oh, <laughs> well, you did order the head cheese. Now John John is off to escape before his voice gets the unfortunate child Bob dubbing. Normally I'd think a kid would be fine in a horror film, but this is a Fulci movie. He could end up with a bullet in his head. Or at least he'll wish for a bullet because he'll be seeing these images in his nightmares for the rest of his life. Okay, the kid is safe this time. Guess it's only the adults who are gonna die. This movie's ageist. The only thing deader in this town than the zombies is this bar. I guess no one is interested in Schlitz on tap. I'm thinking it may be too late to stop these zombies. Guess what? It's All Saints Day. Well, if you want to celebrate, I know one place that has plenty of Schlitz. Though it's zombies drink half-off night, which explains the return of Bob, Giovanni Lombardo Radice may die in nearly everything, but at least this time he returns in zombie form. They're not exactly sure what to do when they get to Father Thomas's tomb, but surely that's gotta be some way to stop the zombies. After the maggot storm, crawling down this old tomb is a walk in the park, but sadly, Father Thomas has already been turned into a rat. Or his body has simply escaped. It's clear the zombies have already won. No one is going to ask Giovanni Lombardo Radice to die twice. It was in Father Thomas's will to be buried in the most clumsily put together tomb ever built. Seriously, any person living or dead could find their way down here. <laughs> The most unbelievable thing here is that Christopher George is the first of these three characters to die. Not buying it. Christopher George is too awesome. It seems these zombies can be killed with a gut wound. That would have helped David Warbeck's lousy shot. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that there's nothing these two can do. Since when does a Fulci movie have a downer ending? Wait, unless they find the Ninja Turtles abandoned subway home, that might solve everything. Or not, Diet Christopher Lee is going to send them straight to hell. <laughs> well, that's all it took, a good hit to the stomach. I'd have thought it would evolve the eyeballs somehow. Damn, I never thought I would see this. The zombies being defeated in a Fulci film. I get more and more surprised by his films every day. So let's see the thrilling conclusion to City of the Living Dead. What? No, that's City of the Walking Dead. I said Living Dead. Living Dead! <laughs> no! No! Wait, what? 
They escape the tomb and everything's fine, but then John John runs up to them and suddenly... Horror? Do Mary and Jerry just simply not like kids? Are they now germaphobes? Are they so used to a downer ending that they don't know what to do in a happy one? Are they finally saddened they can't hang out with Christopher George anymore? This City of the Walking Dead ending makes more sense than this. I guess they realize the horror will truly start again, but I don't know why John John running towards them triggered that thought. Perhaps the ending will be explained in the newly released comic book adaptation from Ibon Press. This copy of City of the Living Dead comes to us in the Blood Edition, which is uncut. It better be uncut. You think I'd buy the Blood Edition for nothing? The worst part is, is that you have to press A-B-A-C-A-B-B -B -B to get the Blood version. Naturally, City of the Living Dead got terrible reviews. I mean, look at this. 55% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's so humiliating, even though technically more critics liked it than didn't. The movie may be stylish and creepy with some delicious gore, but where is this so-called city in the title? I don't see a city full of living dead. Zero stars. Next week for Foolchuary, we're going to be doing a Patreon poll to determine the next movie to be chosen. From now until Friday at midnight Central Time, simply go to patreon.com slash thecinemasnob or click on the link in the description where you can choose between the Foolchi Giallo Mystery, Don't Torture a Duckling, the Foolchi Take on Edgar Allan Poe, The Black Cat, Fulci's fantasy epic Conquest, or the 1984 Fulci melodrama Windy City. It, huh? That last one wasn't... Uh, whatever. Fine. Those four. Have fun. Soon as I can find somebody to buy my shop and my house, I'm famoosin'. Sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Stone Gremlin Productions. Follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob or check out our homepage at thecinemasnob.com.